Let's see. 2.2.1, the IUPAC name of compound E, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at compound E. We have a carbon with a double bond. So that is a characteristic of an alkene, okay? How many carbons do we have in our longest chain? Let's see. If we start numbering from this carbon, we're going to have one, two, three, four. Even if we go down, we still have four carbons on our longest chain. So that seems like we have four carbons on our longest chain. So for 2.2.1, we know that we have butte. Let's go ahead and figure out everything else. We have to start numbering from the side closest to the double bond. Okay, if we are saying that we have one, two, three, four carbons, then if we start numbering from this side, then we will get to the double bond first, okay? Because if we start numbering from this side, then the double bond will be on the third carbon, and that's not what we want. We want the side closest to the double bond, which will be this side, so... This is our longest carbon chain, okay, which is built. So we have built one in. One, because our functional group is on the first carbon, okay? And as you can see, we have methyl and methyl. One methyl is on, so we have two point, so this is the second carbon, and this is the third. 2.3 dash dimethyl built one in okay right so that is our IUPAC name of compound e 2.2.2 we are looking for the IUPAC name of h so let's go ahead and take a look at h okay on h carbon double bonded to oxygen and this carbon is sandwiched by two other carbons that is a ketone so i'm gonna have butane two o okay I think even if you don't include this two, it would still be correct. Because if you have four carbons and on a straight chain, right? And it is a ketone, then the oxygen bonded to the carbon should be on the second carbon. If it if that is not the case, then it becomes an aldehyde. So butane two on. But I also think that if you don't put this two, you would still be uh, correct. That is two point two. Point two. Okay, let's move to the question that follows. Uh, we have butane two on. Okay, right. Two point three. Two point three. We are looking for the structural formula of compound B. So let's go ahead and take a look at compound B. That is two point three point one. So compound B. A carbon with three hydrogen, followed by three carbons with two hydrogen each so one two three with two hydrogens each okay and then after that we have another carbon which is double bonded to an oxygen one other oxygen which is bonded to each carbon okay so this is the structure you're supposed to have for compound b obviously we need to fill out our hydrogens okay you cannot leave it like this only i can do that and not you so this is the structural uh, formula of compound b let's see if we have the correct number of carbons so we have one two three four five six this is one three makes it four five six i think we are good to go okay structural formula of compound c 2.3.2 let's go ahead and take a look at that 2.3.2 structural formula of compound c we have 4 dash ethyl dash 3.3 difluorohexane. So I'm going to start by taking care of hexane. I need six carbons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On the third carbon, I have difluoro. There we go. And on the fourth carbon, I have ethyl. Ethyl will look something like this. Okay. I have a branch with two carbons right so now i just need to fill out uh, my hydrogens and i am done okay so let me leave that for you go ahead and fill out 
all the hydrogens uh, that are required okay right so this is uh, the structural formula of compound compound c 2.3.2 2.3.3 general formula of the homologous series to which compound E belongs. Compound E is an alkene, so the general formula should be CN, H2, and yes, not plus 2, not minus 2, just CN, H2, N. 2.3.4 structural formula of functional group of compound F. Compound F carbon double bonded to an oxygen sandwiched by two other carbons. That is a key to the fun the structure of the functional group should look like this. Okay. We should not have carbons on these. We should not have hydrogens on these two carbons. So if you put two, if you put hydrogens on those carbons, then it is then not correct. Okay. You are now drawing the structure of a uh, propanon right and no longer the functional group of uh, ketones that is 2.3.4 2.3.5 are you pick name of the alcohol needed to produce compound b so for compound b we have the structure let's use the structure instead okay if you come in and put a line the carbon uh, that is bonded or the part of the structure uh, that is bonded to one oxygen is from the alcohol which alcohol has one oxygen? Uh, not one oxygen, but one carbon, okay? Uh, that is methanol, right? Yeah, the alcohol with one carbon is methanol. 2.4.1. 2.4.1, we're looking for letters of a compound that is the letter of a compound that is a functional isomer of compound G. So if you take a look at compound G, we have an acid because of the functional group which we can identify right there and that acid is one two three four five six carbons so we are looking for an ester with six carbons it will be a functional isomer of compound g if you look at b in b we have six carbons so the answer to 2.4.1 is b uh, that ester right there with six carbons will be a functional isomer of g and then two compounds that are chain isomers of each other, okay? G and G and D. D is hexanoic acid. Uh, it is a straight line hexanoic acid, okay? And compound G, it is an acid with six carbons. So they should be chain isomers of each other. Same molecular formula, just different chains. 